Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. And I am Caleb. And we are brothers. That is correct. Guys, um, a good friend of mine, a fellow believer in Yeshua, asked me a very interesting question uh, a little while ago. And this wasn't being, you know, playing devil's advocate. She honestly wanted to know, uh, I always said she, where do unbelievers, people that aren't Christians, derive their moral center from? What's right and wrong to the world? Oh snap, that's a good question. Where does that come from? That's crazy. Well, I, Bible, I know where it know? comes from. Back okay. in the early 90s, I think around 1991, there was a show called Animaniacs, and uh, there were these little cartoons, and whenever they had to make a decision about what was right or wrong, okay. they spun the wheel of morality, and it went like this. <laughs> wheel of morality, turn, 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 show us the lesson that we should learn. And whatever it landed on was right. Well, guys, I remember back on September 11th, 2001, everybody knows of what that day meant to Americans. Um, I went to college, I was in a drawing class. And my drawing teacher was your, your typical uh, hippie, relativism, everything is right in your own eyes, there's no right or wrong. Um, and I remember that day he was completely different. He was shaken to his very core uh, because of what had happened. I saw him shaking, his voice was trembling, he had tears in his eyes, and it was because his entire worldview was just thrown out the window. He never believed in good and evil. I even heard him say that. And that day he was, he was uh, confronted with what true evil really was. Mm. Guys, we don't need to tell you that there's good and evil and right and wrong. That's it's, true. It's very clear whether so, you believe it or not. Scripture yeah. says in James 1, 14 through 15, but each one is mm. tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and mm. enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Mm. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. That's true. And um, it's always been there in sin, nature in man. And God reiterates that after the flood in, in Genesis 8, 21, that you're always going to have that sin nature yeah. as long as you're on this earth. He said, then the Lord said in, uh, in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So you always have that evil in your, in your life. So here's the question, Josh. Um, some people Lying is bad, some people not. Some people cheating on a spouse is bad, some people not. Some people murder is bad. Some people have a complete different moral, you know, pornography, or some people say that's okay, but child pornography. Uh, uh, where is the moral line drawn for an unbeliever who doesn't believe in God? The most terrifying thing about not believing in the deity of God and that morality is subjective okay. is the fact that you begin down a slippery slope wherein anything becomes possible, feasible, and justified. Okay. Now, as we know, most people from the time you're a kid in school, you are mostly navigated by the fear of man, okay. meaning I'm concerned what somebody else thinks about me. Those are the cool kids. Yeah. I'm the nerd. I'm this. Okay. And everybody begins their behavioral patterns based off of being concerned about how they are affected mm. by somebody else's view or opinion of them. Mm. And as you continue to grow and as you're navigated by this, sometimes you join the group of one belief system, mm. right? I associate with this group. They, they accepted me, so I feel this. And sometimes people go as far as to say, you know, there is no, I don't have any beliefs. There is mm. no right or wrong or these other things. Mm. Think of it this way. You live in a world of 8 billion people. If nothing is right or wrong, if everything's acceptable and justified, what happens when the views of one person begin to trespass on the safety right. and the views of another person? Then you're wrong. We see this happening <laughs> in countless cases, even right now in the world today with you're things right. that are happening overseas, where one group feels that this is their right to do, yeah. and so they are sacrificing the lives, the safety, mm. the freedoms, they're maliciously harming other That's people. True. When there is no foundational truth, mm. when there is no this is right and this is wrong, black and white, mm. then the walls and boundaries that can be trespassed for anything and can be justified will literally not only bring anarchy, but it will bring the end of the human race wow. because the chaos that can unfold from the evilness of the wicked heart. Remember what that verse said right there? It mm. said it began with the desire. That's the desire right. was birthed into sin and yeah. from sin came death. Came death. That's, That's right. a three-step program. We're not even talking about 12 steps here. Three steps in which if there is no foundational truth, right or wrong, yeah. what you want That's right. will bring about death and not just death for you, death to those around you. That's right. Um, because sin holds you in bondage, guys. It holds you captive and you may... Uh, be programmed into this life of sin from an early age. It's just like when you're, you're conditioning someone in the military to become a soldier. They, they don't just condition their body, they can condition their mind. So when the, their general, their commanding officer says, point and shoot, they don't they say, don't oh, think. Hold, on, hold on, they don't think, they do that. Well, I feel like the enemy has programmed us 
from a young age. Uh, it, it, literally mind control because when he gives us these little sins and these little things and, and we accept them, then it grows and grows. At an older age, then it's, it's okay. Things are wrong, but we have uh, become captive to these sins. And we explain it away through the idea of maturity. Well, yeah. I'm just more mature now. Mm -hmm. I've got more perspective now. I can accept mm -hmm. these things. You know, we, we don't want to hear a little kid drop the F-bomb, right? But when you're grown up, like mm -hmm. 18 years old, it's okay because he just knows more. That's just part of who he is and yes. whose vocabulary is. Yes, that's true. Um, it's very interesting that we all have the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. no matter what. We, you know, Adam and Eve ate from that fruit. So every person in their life uh, has that knowledge of good and evil. And um, if you continue to silence the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, then God will give you over to reprobate mind, as it says in Romans 128. He says, furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. Then he lists all the sins that people do when they're given over to the depraved mind. And then by verse 32, he says, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but they also approve of those who practice them. People like to jump on this bandwagon of saying the Bible is outdated. This was written in a different time period. Yeah. Man has evolved past these issues and problems. That's right. We can't look at this in a literal manner because if we do, then there's no basis for the things of today. And I think that's an yeah. excuse. It's garbage. It's, a, it's an opportunity to be able to, again, do what you want and have no accountability yeah. and have nothing as a foundational reference because Oh, today's a different time. That's period. true. People say, uh, my sin is not listed in the glossary of a Bible. <laughs> it's not in the Levitical do's and don'ts. Uh, I think Yeshua Messiah made it clear. He, he gave a litmus test of two laws, but all you had to come by, if any question of, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? It's just, do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? And do you love your neighbor as yourself? If anything that you're doing does not uh, pass those two tests, those two laws, then you shouldn't do it. <laughs> At the end of the day, no matter what you choose to live by, whatever you think is right or mm. think it's wrong, whatever you try to convince yourself with as you go to sleep at night, Jesus, Yeshua, That's right. is the way, the truth, and the life. And without Him as mm. your foundation, without Him as your pursuit, without Him steering your ship, you will never be satisfied. That's right. You will never find yourself in a place of honestly being right, and you're never going to, to have your life fulfilled in the way that God had for you. Mm. He has to be at the center of it. There is no way that you can find right quote unquote, without him. Right. There is no way that you can modify it because of your circumstances or situations. So guys, don't let morality be this, this um, whimsical idea that today's day and age whisks you away from saying mm. that it's, it's not okay to say there's something right and there's something wrong, that you can't stand for a truth and say this is the truth regardless mm. because it's not socially acceptable. It doesn't matter what society accepts today. Mm. One day you will stand before the creator of this universe and he will ask you, why, why did, did you, you do, do this? Mm. And you're going to have to answer to him. And nothing about your neighbor's behavior will be acceptable at that moment. Mm. So live your life right today. Live it by the precepts of Yeshua and by his word. And we love you guys. And we hope you join us next time on the Bearded Bible Brothers. Very manly. Very manly. So manly. Your beard's longer than mine. It's clear why, you know, the manliness is admitted to me. Because God favors me more. No, it's because <laughs> you've just been lazier. <laughs> I have better, <laughs> better manscaping. <laughs>